Hap Yarvo. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you guys are doing good. Down under. Staying cool, hopefully. What is the weather like down over there? Let's see. Like weather in Sydney. I'm just curious what we're dealing with. 64. Oh, beautiful day. Up to 75. Oh, my gosh. Go outside. Enjoy the weather, guys. Um, Brad sent in this video. Shout out to Brad for sending this in. It's um, I saw a clip from this burnover, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it was a really crazy clip. And he said he only lives 25 minutes away from where it happened. And he linked me to the full story. So I was just really curious to see that and learn the full story of what happened here. These firefighters are driving through hell. Let's see. That is so insane. So dangerous to state the obvious. Strike Team Golf. Is that the name of the fire? Of, um, just playing through a pretty traumatic event with the uh, losing it. Look at these bunch of badasses. Yeah, strike team. Um, so they're all volunteers. Right here and now we're just sort of heading out to go and um, these can't be volunteers. The and see what's salvageable. I was the OIC on STP 48. Uh, we were the crew that uh, put our red message in for an overrun um, in the South Nara fire. Uh, at the time, it was quite chaotic. Uh, we, it was quite chaotic and we uh, had to wait for uh, the fire front to pass. Sorry. Anyone got a chainsaw? Chainsaw. <laughs> so for those wondering why we might have been in such a remote I like that cut. They got stopped by a fallen tree and now they're they're out of the, they bailed on the bus and they're taking it by foot. King area, we were tasked with uh, an urgent request from the RFS to proceed down to the end of Haynes Road. My god, look at this place. Uh, just the aftermath. To assist two RFS crews uh, at a property that we're trying to protect um, property and residents. So our There's still team smoke to come down this road. Literally a burning stump. Find that crew, link up with them, and offer property and life protection with the RFS um, in that area. A little bit further down we got, uh, conditions worsened. The fire front that was here came through with the southerly in a matter of less than 30 seconds. It was 100 meters, 200 meters off that way. It rose up higher than the treetops and came through at us. By that time, we were trying to turn our pumpers around. Um, our pumpers? That's what they call the trucks. Make our way out. And at that point... Because they pump water? The, the fire front hit us uh, side on. Fire comms, fire comms. Does anyone copy on this channel? Red, red, red. Yeah, fire comms. Pass your red message. Identify yourself and pass your red message. This is These guys sound so young. STP 48. We are part Does that mean I'm getting old? Of Strike Team Golf. We are on Haynes Road. Our truck and pump 211 Bravo are inoperable. We have been overrun. Our trucks will not move. Our oh trucks God. are catching a light. We I didn't know the trucks broke down. Need immediate assistance. Over. Or got stuck. That's terrifying. Welcome to STP 48. Yourself and 211 Bravo overrun. Trucks are breaking down, need immediate help. Is that correct? Over, are you sheltering in the vehicles? Over. Imagine breaking down in the middle of a freaking... But if we are sheltering the vehicles, Inferno. we do not know how much longer we'll be able to shelter. The main fire front has passed. We are considering using BA to go out on foot as the main fire front has passed and our truck is on fire. The truck is on fire. Fire comes SP 348. Understood. You may use BA to get out of the vehicle. Um, we'll endeavour to get. This reminds me of hearing like the, the the last phone calls of people in the towers on 9/11. You know what I mean? Have you seen those videos? Like it's it's totally horrifying. Get assistance as soon as possible. Um, I'll give you my exact coordinates. 
Oh my god. How did they get to these guys? Their truck is on fire. That's not freaking good when the fire truck is on fire, man. Is that the truck? Come on, boys. Come on, let's go. So I was the driver. That's got to be when serious fear sets in. Of STP 48. There it is. Um, as you can see, we got smashed by the fire. And uh, I managed to get in reverse and perform the U-turn to try and get us out of here. But as soon as I did that, our, um, our truck stopped and wouldn't drive. They all survived, right? And the same, same happened to the truck up there. But um, luckily, their truck wasn't on fire like ours. And, we managed to uh, get our, our BA on and um, get to them to make sure that they Look at the tire. They were okay and they got their BA on and then we all walked out together. We were in the truck, the first truck to go back for the boys. Uh, that, what we thought from hearing the red messages and we lost comms, we thought that we were going back to recover eight bodies. Um, as we were going down the road, very, very relieved to see eight, eight wow. flashing helmets. Walking. They thought they didn't make it. Down the road in BA. Um, all safe and sound, so huge Unreal, right man. Unreal. Look at this footage. Sparks flying like they're walking in the middle of an angle grinder. I mean, how? It's got to be so hot. They're in the middle of a giant campfire. So this is the uh, this is the lead vehicle, STP 95. I was sitting here. It's a good thing they had their gear on and everything. Then he's in the back. This is where he was passing that the uh, fire blanket across. As you can see, it's quite hot. We were lucky enough to get out. Our vehicle's still standing. Um, we had an airline go on us, so this is far as we got. The side of the road, middle of nowhere sort of thing. Once we got to the point that they, we realised that the, this fire front is pushing through, that it was too dangerous. I love Australians. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Their attitude just... They say it like it's no big deal. Well, the truck is still standing. Mm. So we turned around. Um, once we turn around, we're heading through the fire front. Um, at this stage, I was putting my radio messages. There's some brave dudes. Telling the rest of the crew to retreat, retreat. This is too dangerous. So we turned around, and um, at this stage, flames coming across up the side of our vehicle. Um, so luckily enough, Danny had a um, fire blanket to um, pass through and take that, that radio peak off the um, side of the truck. And off the side. Mm, okay, so that's what that was. That's what they were putting up on the window. A fire blanket. At the time of the, the flashover, I felt yeah. the radiant heat com coming through the window, so I've reached down to the fire blanket, which stops, help help stop the heat coming through and wow. us. So I've just reached over. To it's Jack. that freaking hot that you have to stop the heat from coming through a glass window. In the front, and just ask him to you know, put that up on his, on his window because at this time the flames were near on at the truck. And we've just pushed it up, up, up like so. One day we'll have robots out there fighting these fires, but thank God for brave guys like this out there doing it now. Just to help us cut, cut the heat down. And then I've looked out there to see if it's finished and just kept on opening it up like that. Um, <laughs> and to, until we got through the, the main bulk of the, the flame itself. Jeez. Firemen in Australia, next level. I mean, go check out Fire and Rescue SNSW. <laughs> Shout out to those guys. Especially if there's any watching. Shout out to you. Any first responders. Shout out to you. Damn, that's crazy. Thank you for sending that in, Brad. Thank you for watching. Happy Arvo. I'll see you guys tomorrow. That's all I got. Goodbye.